Hi, and welcome to the poverty alleviation and profitability kind of semi-informal discussion that we're going to have. Uh, we would have loved to have made it to the actual round table in Sydney, uh, but this is the best we can do. We're here at the Judge Business School, and I'm here with uh, two amazing people. Uh, the first is uh, Jadeep Prabhu. Jadeep is my supervisor, as well as the professor of Indian business and enterprise here at the Judge Business School. And he's also recently published a best-selling book called Jugard Innovation. Think frugal, be flexible, generate breakthrough growth. I'm also joined by Andrew Jenkins. Uh, Andrew is the coordinator of the Impact Assessment Unit at BRAC's Research and Evaluation Department, published by uh, BRAC. So thanks to both of you for uh, joining me here today. The title of this roundtable uh, discussion is Poverty, po Poverty Alleviation and Profitability. Um, I'm curious about what you guys think about the role of business in alleviating poverty on the one hand and making profits on the other, because to some it seems like a very counterintuitive notion. Yeah, I mean, maybe I can jump in. I mean, you may think that, you know, that's a contradiction in terms, uh, but let's just step back and think about it. Now, I mean, the World Bank estimates that there are something like 4 billion people around the world uh, who live at the so-called bottom of the pyramid. These are people who are earning less than $3,000 PPP per annum. So about less than $9 a day PPP. Uh, this is more than half the world's population. Many of them live in, in Africa, Asia, Latin America, but there are others in other parts of the world. And these are people who are left out of the formal economy. So they don't have access to things that perhaps the three of us take for granted. Uh, they don't have access to uh, financial services. They're unbanked. They don't have access to clean energy through the grid. They don't have access to health care and education of even a rudimentary sort. And, you know, traditionally, the solution or the approach to solving this problem has been aid, frankly, or big government projects. And while some of, them, some of that has been successful, I think there's an increasing understanding that we need other ways to go about this. One of which is involving business, small or large. And where we are beginning to see uh, businesses, small businesses in some cases, in others very large corporations, beginning to offer market-based solutions that meet these unmet needs of people while making them economically viable. And a classic example would be the mobile phone industry. Good example where companies, small and large, have made lots of money while providing solutions that have meaningful sort of benefits to people in remote areas. People who don't have access not just to communication, but now through mobile phones have access to financial services, have access to some kind of educational and health services and so forth. So I believe that this is not a contradiction in terms. Nevertheless, there are many challenges. I'm not about to say that there aren't any challenges. But I think where organizations like BRAC really are very interesting is that they show that you can take some of the best practices from, from corporations, companies, and apply them in contexts where governments have typically been operating to really good effect. And I think Andrew can talk at length about how BRAC has done that. And, and some of the models, particularly in BRAC, which is a big player in that area, they have used um, good business practice, particularly in the finance department, to organize themselves on a large scale to deliver services. And I think that's made a major contribution to progress. Progress can be made. And I think that's a very good point you're raising as well. The, the motive or the incentive for companies now to get into this for the long haul is making itself apparent. Namely, uh, the uh, decline in growth in the West, mm -hmm. in their traditional markets, and the rise in growth opportunities in emerging markets. And if you look at emerging markets, if you look at Bangladesh, if you look at India, uh, the opportunities aren't so much in the cities, which are already saturated. They're in the smaller towns and, and in the villages, really, because that's where the mass of the population is. So the, that financial motive is making itself apparent, and that's why you see this move of companies into the space. And we, we've seen that, that farmers and, and small, small producers and, and small uh, entrepreneurs in the countryside have been extremely innovative, and that's what's driven this consistent, consistent agricultural growth rate. These ventures are often targeted at the poor in isolated rural areas where expenses um, for business can be astronomically high and margins razor thin. So do you have any kind of parting advice or rules of thumb that businesses could use when considering these opportunities? 
Well, I mean, so I'll take the business perspective, and then mm -hmm. I think you'll find from Andrew that BRAC adopts a similar, has similar challenges because mm -hmm. they have to meet that cost at the mm -hmm. very least, even if they're not trying to make a profit. But for, for businesses, uh, particularly if they're delivering something physical, mm -hmm. you know, physical product, there's a so-called last mile challenge, which is exactly what you pointed out. But even if they're uh, delivering a service because they have to put people there, and the way they've, they've solved this in, in cases when they solve it is to use local people as partners in the process, uh, use them as distributors, people who deliver the service, and that's how you very cleverly get around the last mile problem. And at the same time, create employment opportunities for people in those communities, mm -hmm. which increases their livelihoods and their ability to spend. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's a potentially a virtual circle. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not easy, but businesses are doing it. But I think you'll find that BRAC has been doing this for longer. Uh, because they have to meet their costs. Yeah, I think that's right. And I, th I think the key, the key is, is having partners who understand the situation. And, and I mean, you mentioned the mobile phone situation. The mobile phone. People made money on the mobile phone, a lot of money, um, with very low rates. I mean, if I compare what I pay in Bangladesh for mobile phone and what I pay here, there's a huge difference. Right? And it's because of the volume. I mean, the volume is just absolutely massive. I mean, geographically, it was a, it was a very advantageous situation. Right? And, and it, it changed. I think for, for, for the population in general, it changed everything. Ways of social interaction and business and all kinds of things just changed completely. And it's accessible to almost everybody. There are very few people who can't get a mobile phone. And it changes, you know, gives them all kinds of opportunities. And I think the other important thing is not so much to see this as a challenge, but an opportunity. Okay, so that's it from us here at the Judge Business School. A big thanks to JD Prabhu and Andrew Jenkins.